So, what do you think? Well, it brings back memories. Bad memories. Like shit, I completely forgot that I had to make a part 2 of a review of some SFM pony series. God, I hate anticipating dates. <laughs> Mugga machines, they're small, they're cute, they're dangerous to your baby's health, they are sets, there are games about it, and I don't think anyone's understanding what I'm saying right now! Micro machines is a toy line of vehicles starting in the 1980s, which are way smaller than Hot Wheels in size. Like them, they had sets and tracks, but did Hot Wheels feature a motor mouth advertising them? This is the Micro Machine Man, presenting the most midget miniature motorcade of Micro Machines! Each one has dramatic details, terrific trims, defender styling, precision paint jobs, working wheels, Micro Machine cars of vast variety, including Lamborghini, Trans Am, Corvette, Rover, Four Blades, a pickup charger, and many more. This is one of the stuff that got Micro Machines famous, and then it got sold more than Hot Wheels, Matchbox, and even Red combined at the time. Aside from Home Alone, it also got famous from the licensed games, published by Codemasters. Well, there was one for me for Grand slash Atari, but I don't think that's relevant to the topic. Micro Machines was released to a variety of consoles and PCs at the time, from the NES to the Amiga to even the CDI. I don't think it should be put next to them. I'll be playing the Mega Drive version, ported in house from 1993. This particular version, like most of them, could only have up to two players. Well, I don't blame them, I don't think it could support Sega's team player peripheral anyway. You can choose between head-to-head -head or regular races. The formula is where you have to go further away from the opponent. Getting all the bonus balls wins the race. I went with the latter, it's my second favorite mode in the series behind Time Attack that was introduced in the sequel. Time to pick a character, as if that would change anything. I choose Cherry, because she does this when you select her. I this is how humans do, right? I guess it's trying to emulate the animation from the NES version, but I guess whoever animated her was really lazy. Alright, qualification race, let's go! So as you can see, it's a top-down racer. You simply use the B button to accelerate, and A to brake. Yeah, I invert, but it feels more natural that way. The handling depends on which vehicle you drive. It could either be slow yet grippy, or fast yet slippery. There's also a few that are special, like the Warriors, where you can destroy your opponents and you at your front end at a certain speed, at the cost of yourself. There's also the tanks, which, of course, can shoot using the C button. And as soon as the race starts, everyone shoots! It is slow and has a wide steering angle, obviously, but it's fun to use the cannon for about several seconds, and then not use it when you are way ahead of the pack. I was disappointed at the helicopters since other than being air vehicles, they're just like most of them. Nothing special can make them go up or down like in the sequel. Nothing. Boring. After qualifying, it's time to choose a few rivals, which are mostly just stereotypes. We have the greaser stereotype, the token black guy, the token black girl, the fat one, the dumb one, the Asian kid, the punk kid, the... girl, the smart lucky one, the Latino kid, I think. The blonde spoiled brat that I mentioned before, and no goth girl? Why live? Each vehicle has its own theme, mainly household places to make it feel relatable to the common kid. Sports cars are in the office, tanks in the bedroom, boats are in the bathroom, dune buggies are in the sandbox, warriors are in the garage, I think, Formula 1 cars are on the bailout table for some reason, and SUVs are in either the dining room or a kitchen. Oh my god. I left the stove on! Ah, uh, chill out. You only get shocked when it's a gas stove. Oh, shit. The game has a total of 26 tracks to finish. The first tracks, not including the qualifying one, are pretty short and really easy. Except for the second one, there's a sudden difficulty ramp with obstacles on the way, including the bridges, and the car goes so fast that it might not have enough reaction time when it comes to corners. Thankfully, there's the options that serve as visual aids. But after that, it went easy. There, the tracks keep getting longer. And I mean really longer. The later tracks are excessive endurance, with lots of corners and obstacles, and long straights, making it really challenging and tedious at the same time. Where will this end? If you get 3 wins in a row, you get to drive a big old monster truck toy, and do a lap before time runs out. They're really difficult. There's a lot of obstacles on the way, and thin paths around lakes, which can cost a lot of time and sanity. If you manage to complete a lap, you're rewarded with an extra life. All that for a lousy life? I find it bullshit that if you get 3rd or 4th place, you lose a life and do the race again, but if one of the AI opponents lose, they stick around until one of them leaves every 3 races. That's stupid. 
What's even more stupid is that on the later levels, the AI will get a way better launch than you. For a Mega Drive racing game, it takes almost 2 hours to finish the single play mode, that is, of course, head to head and challenge combined. By today's standards, that isn't all too bad, but to me, it feels like 5. That's pretty much it in terms of gameplay, it's just a simple game that gets tediously hard later on. When you win the final race, you get this screen where your character is in a trophy somehow. And here's something unusual, name dropping Nintendo in the credits of a Sega game. Who's gonna notice here? As for presentation, it looks great. It's even better than the NES version. Jesus, puke green on the tables? I love the simple look of the cards, even if a few look weird, especially the Warriors ones. The track environments can be hit or miss. I like some of them like the office and sandbox, but others like the patio, the garage, bathroom and a few others look bland. Look at this, it's just pots spitted all around the track. While I like the way it's presented, the view of this is a bit too close, making it hard to react when it comes to fast vehicles. But like I said, there are visual cues as you approach an incoming corner. For sound, it's weak. The music is fine, but when you drive, you're always gonna hear the drowning noise of the engine. They all use the same noise! It's just so jarring to hear it for most of the game. That was Micro Machines. It's a fine game. The single player experience could get tedious in the later levels, as in challenge mode, so it's probably best to play with a friend. It was so successful that it spawned 4 sequels, a spin-off, and a completely unrelated game that wasn't even made or published by Codemasters. Stick around as I might take a look at them one day. Shit! I forgot. I hope nobody's shaking my apartment. Actually, the police scheduled an investigation on it. Oh fuck! I hope nobody's dumb enough to smoke there! Why do I get the feeling something's gonna happen whenever I say these types of... Phrases. Ah, doesn't matter. I was about to move out anyway. Besides, I already have all the stuff I need in a rented garage. And since you're here, um... Can I be your roommate? Sure you can. I'm tired of living alone anyway. So, you hungry for something? Yeah, maybe some mangas would help. Mangas? It's what they say McDonald's in Australia. Oh, I was speaking of Wendy's. Uh, we don't have Wendy's here. Ah, I forgot I'm not in the US anymore. You've been to the US before? Uh, it's a long story.